So hi guys, in this video we're gonna do some minor adjustments or modifications to our program so it becomes more user-friendly. Um, the first thing what bothers me is that, you know, let's do a, let's do a sample conversion. Uh, the first thing what bothers me is that every time I, I need to convert, uh, I have to press the button for something to happen. Now, is it possible to, you know, do something that it works automatically every every time I, I choose something in the drop down. Um, not with Python. Uh, you cannot have this sort of immediate interactivity with Python. You always have to press the button. Now, why is that so? Um, Python is a server side language. Same thing as PHP, same thing as Java. And with the server side languages, the whole system works like this. The browser is the client. You, basically, you as a user are seen as a client of the server. So every time the client, in this case, the browser or you, uh, does a change, you have to send that change to the server with this button and then what happens then the server sends it to the appropriate language how does he know that well based on the file this is a py.py file so he, the server sends it to the um, python language and in your form in your form here if we go to the template we have said with a question mark, basically we're sending that document to itself. So basically we're sending, we're sending the server sends this request by the client to this document because in this document, Python is doing then all this conversion stuff. And then Python gives the server those outputs, this here, the converted value and the factor, and then the server sends it back to the client and voila, the client sees it then. And then you as a user extract that from the client, from the browser. So the whole process always demands that the server do the work uh, as, as, a sort of a, uh, um, as a sort of intermediary to, to, to Python in this case. So that's why we always have to press that button. And just to recap the whole process, the client, the browser, has these changes done by the user. These changes have to be uh, transferred to the browser. This is done with this button. Then the server takes this request by the client and sends it to the appropriate language based on the file ending. And then the language does its work, in, in our case, the conversion and sends, it back, sends the outputs back to the server. Uh, also, what, what, the, what Python does in our case is, for instance, create the dropdowns. So it sends all these outputs back to the server and the server sends it then back to the client. So this is sort of the process. And this is the process, this is true for all server-side languages, whatever they are. But then you have client-side languages. Dominant in this sector is JavaScript. And what happens here is because JavaScript is a client side language, it does not need any server. So it does not need any intermediary. So with JavaScript, whatever you do here, it is immediately um, uh, done. And this is why JavaScript is, is a, an extremely dominant language these days because it offers this client side interaction this immediate feedback without you having to press a button like here. And JavaScript is as well a, um, a server-side language, can be used as a server-side language. So what we're gonna do here, and this is, this is now what we're doing here is basically true for a lot of, for 99% for, for of, of all real world web, uh, web applications. And actually here what we have is actually a real world application. I mean, it's really a functioning converter. And all real world applications are built 
of multiple languages. So first of all, we have the, most people don't call it a language, but we have the HTML, which is basically the code for the user interface. We have that. So that's our first, if you want, language. Our second language is the Python, which is basically doing the real work, i.e. all this conversion. And as well, generating all those drop downs. So that's the second language. And then now here, we need a third language, i.e. JavaScript, for our application to be more interactive. And this is true for a lot of uh, for most web applications, they are they have multiple languages. Each language has, or each language is being used for its strengths. Uh, JavaScript, its 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 forte is in this immediate interaction, so we're going to use that here. Python has a lot of other fortes, so we're going to use that here. And obviously, HTML has its own forte or unique forte in that it uh, uh, renders uh, HTML and CSS. Uh, it renders the, the user interface. So this is the way we build web apps. And here again, I need to enhance now my web application with some JavaScript for those menus, for those drop downs to work automatically without me always having to press on that button. So how do I do that? This is a very simple piece of JavaScript what we're doing here. And here, what, what I'm basically saying, if I, if I, if I say that in English, once I change my dropdown, I would want uh, for JavaScript to press that button. Once this dropdown is changed, I want JavaScript to submit the form for me, to send that form for me. So I don't have to press the button anymore. And this is coded like this. Uh, we have two dropdowns. And here, with this Python code, we're generating the dropdown. And this part here is the HTML for the beginning of the dropdown. And here we're going to add this. First of all, we need a trigger. When should JavaScript kick in to send this form? Well, uh, on change. So basically, once I change, uh, once I change this dropdown, then JavaScript should kick in. And what should it do? This is then equal, and the command comes within those double quotes and it starts with this that means once this drop down changes this refers to the document to the to the to the to the html document we're in this and then what about this well we've got a form in this document and if you look at the document here's the template this is the document and in this document, part or a section of this document is the form. And with this form should be sent. So here, this basically document dot form. This is that, that subsection of the document. What about this form? Well, submit it, send it. And there's a function called submit. And just like with, uh, let me maximize that. Same as with Python functions, uh, basically all functions I know of in any language that you always have them, uh, you, you write the function's name and then open and close uh, paren. Right, so basically again, this code, basically once the, uh, the, the dropdown changes, i.e. the user does any, something with that dropdown, he changes some, some value, then this document, this for, the form of this document, please submit that. That's basically what it's saying. And I'm going to copy that and paste it down here for the other drop down because we've got to right, save it. And now that should work. Let me reload the page by just sending another conversion. So and now once I change here, I should automatically have a conversion. And you see now it's converting from foot to nanometer. Uh, let's go foot to foot. It's one. And let's go to micrometer. So now, actually, I don't need that button anymore because if I need to input a value, I just can input it and return. And the drop downs don't need the button anymore. So I can just comment out the button or delete it. So I'll go back to my uh, HTML template. And as I explained previously, I just uh, comment this. 
piece out and that's the way you comment out html you started off with this basically angle bracket exclamation mark minus minus and you close that uh section that you wish to comment out with minus minus and then minus minus and then uh, uh, closing angle bracket right so that's it save it and if i now reload by doing not i have i've got uh have I just... Oh, I'm so silly. I just commented out the wrong section. Uh, I should comment out this here. The button. And... I just commented out the conversion factor. Save. And let's go again. Right. Now I have no button but conversion factor. Right. And now... Actually, I don't need a button. Let's go 79 and let's take millimeter and now just converted the 79 from millimeters to micrometers and then feet and so on so now it's, it's extremely interactive um, uh, application and if you need just to change the number but keep that conversion just uh, given any number return and bang you've got that so we're already gone a step further and I think I'll, I'll, I'll uh, defer that to the next video uh, where we're going to look at the numbers and make them more user-friendly.